Hello everybody, I'm SJM. Welcome to a new, new-ish, I guess, uh, mod pack here from the All The Mods team. It's their Gravitas uh, mod pack, which is based on Terra Firmacraft. I've played some Terra Firmacraft in the past on the uh, Redditus 2 mod pack. So I kind of have a starting base on where to go in uh, Terra Firmacraft. So I, I don't think this is going to be as much a um, Let's Play series as it's going to be a um, tips and tricks type of series because um, this will be more like just uh, using my knowledge to give you like little heads up on how to do things a little bit more efficiently etc in the world so as we get going here once we spawn in um, I changed my minimap settings a little bit in the top right there so if you see we've got our coordinates also the biome and the uh, day number because I like to keep track of the day number and also because that'll go into the seasonal things which you can find in the uh, Uh, guidebook. So in the guidebook is built right into the system. You don't need an external book or anything like that. You just click on that button there and it'll give you an overview of Terra Firmacraft. Um, particular things to pay attention to is the world. Um, geology and ores and minerals are going to give you the bulk of the information that you're going to want to know, but that's going to be a little bit later. You don't need that straight off the hop. Uh, but the getting started going through all of this is probably through these first four or five is going to be going to get you the first start into the mod pack and getting to your first pickaxe and your first metal tools um, because in this in terra firma craft you can't actually get metal tools for a while so just going through you'll find these rocks on the ground you can pick them up just with a right click or you can break them as well they only take a half a second to break but right clicking picks them up immediately it's a little bit quicker but um, just note that you can't do that if you've got a placeable block in your hand because this will just add to the rock pile and I can't right click that anymore so up to you which way you do that it's not a big deal one way or the other um, and then the next thing we're going to need once we have our rocks are some sticks and we have to go close by a tree to start finding these on the ground. So once we've got a couple of sticks there, then we can actually start getting into the meat and potatoes there. Um, we're going to want a knife. So knife is the one of the most important and then a stone axe. These are the first couple of things that you're going to want to nap. And with the knife, you can cut uh, leaves and, oops, I clicked on my, so yeah, we've got seasons in here, which is why I like having the day count up, as well as um, years. Years will go by and have an effect on the gameplay as well a little bit later on. Uh, but you can use a knife on these leaves and that will give you a better chance to drop some sticks and saplings. Not supposed to be a higher percentage, but maybe it's just um, some confirmation bias on my part. I seem to find more saplings when I use the knife. The knife also makes it a lot faster to get through the leaves rather than just punching them. See how long it takes to get through a leaf while punching it. So that's I usually use the knife on them. That gives me a whole bunch of sticks. We'll need those eventually, not right away, but um, not, not a bad thing to have for sure is a couple of stacks of sticks at any one time. Once you chop down a tree, you don't get any of the drops from the leaves after it. So that's just something to note there when you're getting started off. And there's something making noise here. So I can see in this distance, there's a couple of um, wolves. These are actually predators in Terra Firma Craft, and they are nocturnal predators. So during the day, they will be sleeping and they won't affect you, but you definitely don't want to go close to them at night. Nighttime in Terra Firma Craft does not have any mob spawns, so that's not something that you have to worry about. 
um, but the mobs will spawn in caves. So that is that is something that you do have to worry about. So I'm just going to be getting gathering a little bit of wood here off the start. Um, and I'm not grabbing too many sticks and saplings off of these oak trees because I'll show you here if I put down... Oh, this is ash. If I put down this ash sapling, actually it's got a six-day growth. Um, if you plant a sapling, it'll tell you how long it will take that sapling to grow into a tree. So maybe we'll gather some of these ash saplings and have that is our main wood source, wood type. So I'm just going to be doing a lot of this for the first day and not a heck of a lot else um, unless I come across some clay which is the other thing that we're going to need early game and I'll bring you back when we get to there. I'm going to bring you back here to illustrate another important point in Terra Firmacraft. It happens in other packs as well but leaves are transparent blocks which means you cannot step on them. I fall right through that leaf if I try to jump on it, so it slows you down so you don't actually take a lot of fall damage, so use that information for what it will, but yeah, just note that there are a few different transparent type of blocks in the game. That's like three knives worth of, three stone knives worth of leaves that I've broken. Um, we'll go over the next point here, which is weight. Um, so items now have a size and weight as well. So this logs are medium weight and a very large size. So very large only stacks up to 16 at a time for these logs. Sticks are normal size, so they stack to 32. And then things that are very small will stack to 64. Um, but just note that, yeah, the small only stacks to 32 at as well so the loot the small rocks that you pick up off the ground you pretty much only want to have the one stack in your hand at a time because they are pretty much all over the place as well so we're getting close to the end of the first day here so now that it's become a night time i'm going to want to pay attention to the map a little bit more for predators so i have them they are on the mini-map there, but you can also look at Zero's map by pushing M. You will have to resolve a um, keybind conflict to be able to see this. And actually, let's go back onto my waypoints, which is U, and I'm going to enable the spawn because when I set up my initial little first base, I actually want to stay relatively close to spawn um, for a couple of different reasons, but we also want to be close to water because we've got the um, not only a hunger bar but a thirst bar in Terra Firmacraft. So you're definitely going to want to set up your shop close by some water so that you have access to that um, relatively easily. So. That might be a better spot for my initial base. And also on this map, I can see that there's a structure here uh, just from knowing the world. But this is where a villager will live. Um, and I'll go over that here in the next minute or two uh, when we bring you back. But for now, I think I'm going to make my way up to this spot for making my initial first base. Down by this large body of water can't be too bad either. It gives me close access to a lot of trees as well, so I don't have to worry about um, replanting all of my trees close by my base as well. So um, the next major tip that I'm going to give is when you're wandering around in the world, keep your eye on the ground. And uh, I'll bring you back from time to time when I find the things that I... Uh, this is a very important tip to uh, note on. And this is actually kind of hilly right here, and I don't want to be there. So I think I'm going to make my way back to that other one up this way here, to that little source of water instead. So yeah, I'll bring you guys back when I uh, find things that are noteworthy. 
And this is the primary reason why we keep our eyes on the ground, is so you can find these little ore clumps. So all of the metals or ores in the game are go by some of their like Latin names, and they generate in different biomes and different areas depending on um, the geology of the world, which as I mentioned in here, it's found under the world section, geology and ores and minerals. This will tell you all you need to know about where certain ores spawn and why, but if you can never remember like me, you can always check in JEI and look up hematite. Hematite melts into cast iron. Cast iron is actually well into the mid game of terra firma craft, so we're not going to worry about this right now, but we can always mark it on the map, right? So I do um, mark this as hematite instead of just iron because of the there are the different kinds. So there's magnetite, which will be iron, and they spawn at different Y levels as well as in different rocks. So and um, that just kind of lets me know, hey, hematite is found in, you know, between why this and why that. That's maybe a little bit easier than finding something that's uh, magnetite, which might be a little bit deeper type of thing. So um, there should be several of these around, and it indicates kind of the bounds well, it doesn't actually perfectly indicate the bounds of where the vein is underground, but um, it'll give you an idea where to start digging for them a little bit later on once we get into mining. Oh yes, the other thing I wanted to mention is there's literally almost no reason to sprint or sprint jump in the early game. Um, yeah, you can get across some of these smaller bushes a little bit faster, but once you start hitting this grass here, it's going to slow you down irregardless. Here we come across our first wild crop. Uh, this is rye. Uh, the grains are probably the best early game crops, but one thing that you don't want to do is to gather up a lot of food uh, early on and especially in your starting biome, you kind of want to leave as much food alone as possible um, because when you get to winter, when things aren't growing, these will still be there and still be harvestable for food. So this is sort of a long-term thing that you can do for yourself in the vicinity of where you're going to have uh, your, your base set up. I'm just looking for where this water is. That's a little bit this way still. Yeah, this will do. Let's set up... This side's a little bit hillier. Probably right in here is fine. Generally nothing wrong with being right here. Um, when we uh, have our knife, we're going to be able to break some grass with it to get this straw. Straw is one of the more important things in the early goings, so we're going to want a little bit of this. Um, it can be used to make thatch, which is an, one of your earliest game building materials. So you can build some walls out of thatch like that, but just note that thatch is a, a transparent block, so you can walk right through it. So it's not something that, well, it's something I guess you could use as like a doorway, or um, you could use it as a roof, but it doesn't stop rain either. Uh, but the other good thing about thatch is it can always convert back and forth. So it's an easier way to store it because it'll step on because it's a small item. It'll only stack up to 32 at a time. But you know you can always change your straw into thatch and then turn it back a little bit later. Um, the other thing that we can do with straw is to build a little campfire. So we're going to do that here. Um, in the book here, it does explain how to make a campfire. Pits of fire here. You'll need a fire starter, which is just two sticks, and then make the fire pit. I'm not going to do that right away here, um, but you just throw it on the ground, three sticks, and then you can throw up to three igniter sources, so 
straw is so easy to get you'll just get that and then you'll just use your fire starter on this and it'll make a fire pit for you um, like I said I don't do it right away until I know exactly where I want my fire pit but because I'm not going to be cooking anything we could make some torches and I will a little bit later on but just not right away here um, off the start of the game just grab an empty hand so we need to refill our water so just do that and then the other tip that I had for right now is now that we have a little bit of this grains you definitely want to note on here that it says that this is going to expire in one month and two days on July 4th but if we put it in our crafting grid with a knife it'll change it into the grain version of the um, item and that will actually last a lot longer. So you get longer longevity out of it, and as well, you'll need it in this version if you want to lure or breed animals. I read about that in the husbandry section, but um, that's not until mid-game anyways as well. So this is where I'm going to be setting up my initial camp area. So let's just hit you, add home and we'll make home blue how about blue that'll work so we're within a hundred meters of spawn which isn't too bad because if we die we'll uh, spawn back over there until we find a large hide we can't make a spawn point so that's just one thing to note there and uh, the next thing I want to go over is storage. So initial storage with your logs, if you just shift and right click on the ground, you can put down this log pile. And then once you have the log pile down, you can shift, you can just click them in with that, or you can shift click entire stacks into it. So right there, it'll put all but the five, and then I can stack things up there as well. Um, just want to note something in this game. We'll make a shovel real quick here and dig up some dirt because a lot of the blocks are affected by gravity in Terra Firma Craft. So I'll just show you, dig up a couple of pieces of dirt here. Put down a piece of dirt, but if I try to put a piece of dirt on top of it, it's going to roll off to the side and it'll actually do it Actually, that's the wrong tool. <laughs> Even if we try to put down a piece of dirt here, bang, it's going to fall off to the side there. And even it fell down to there, it, was, it can go down even further, so it fell down there. So this is one thing to note. Um, stone, so like this kind of stone here. Cobblestone is affected by gravity as well. Um, dirt and, um, well, Pretty much most blocks are and I'm going to be pointing out a couple that you can make that aren't affected by gravity but for that we're going to need some clay so we'll bring you back there in a minute or two. So I'm coming up on this little villager hut here. This is actually not one of the good ones but at the same time we can get a free crafting table and a free torch out of it. We could also break this bed and make a spawn point if we wanted to. And I'll just... Actually, I forgot about that. The villager beds, the villager beds won't break for you. So just note, and then of course, because this is thatch, you can walk right through it. You don't actually need to go in and out of it and the proper entrance for it. Um, where is the little villager? Did he get stuck down here some... Oh, there's a creeper! I don't want to mess with him so I'm gonna leave him alone for now we'll come back and we'll if you interact with the villager he's got some trades in there and it depends on his profession because uh, his face is blocked by the creeper face I can't tell you which one he is but um, they've got some set trades and that's definitely late game stuff trading with the villagers so it's not something that we're gonna do a lot of here in the early game We've got a cherry tree here, so that's pretty nice because we've actually got cherries. So these expire real fast, so 
Um, you don't want to pick those until you're ready to eat them, but that's really good that we've got a fruit source nearby that's actually in fruiting already. So I haven't found any of those in the, what, five or eight starts that I've done in the game so far. Um, some of the, the fruits obviously give us hydration back at the same time as hunger, so that's just something for you to note as well uh, when we're out in a bit. But I am on the hunt for clay, so I'm just going to continue on in this direction here. So we've got, yeah, we've got some green apples over here as well. So that'll be an autumn crop. Uh, there's obviously berry bushes around here as well. We can pick these up if we had a hoe, but I don't really need to relocate those just yet, so I'm not going to. I'm going to go and keep out, keep a lookout for clay, so I like looking at the sides of the blocks where we can, but we can also get it, uh, find some flowers which are indicators of clay, um, but I'm not seeing any of those here just yet. When we come across them, I guess uh, I'll be pointing them out, so I'll keep looking and I'll bring you back there when we come across some clay. Alright, so unlike in vanilla Minecraft, clay isn't necessarily found close by rivers. As we can see here, I came up to the riverside because one thing that the rivers do offer is a whole lot of exposure to the sides of the blocks, which is the primary way which we can find clay. And it looks like this stuff right here. So if you see the sides of the blocks looking like this, you know that's where clay is. Uh, none of these plants here are the true indicators of clay, so I can't point that thing out, but it, it is all in the book here in the pottery section and it'll show you the clay indicator plants there that tell you that clay is underneath it. Also the um, Wyla, Wayla, whichever variation we have here will tell you that it's clay as well. So this is just regular loam glass but this is loam clay grass so if we were just walking along and we couldn't see the sides of these blocks they'd be really hard to tell unless you're really keeping your eye on the whale at the top. So there's not a lot of clay here but I am going to gather up as much as I can uh, so we'll bring you back there once I've dug all of this stuff up. Alright so we've made it back home with some of our clay here. Um, I did not find very much other clay. I crossed the river and looked a little bit on this side and then came back. Um, yeah, not a lot of clay in this biome here for whatever reason. I'm in a mid-altitude continental type of region, so I don't know if that has a lot to do with it. There's quite a bit of rainfall in this area, so I thought there might be more clay, but maybe I'm just missing it for now. Not a big deal at the moment, but we do want to get our first storage item, which is a large vessel. So if we just go into the napping, which is just right clicking with that, and we look at our vessels, there's these small vessels, which will um, hold four of any one of any item, but the large vessels will be able to hold up to nine. And we can also seal these to uh, make food last longer. But just looking at the napping recipe, we just hollow out the middle, make a big U out of it, and that'll give us the unfired large vessel. And then we'll have to fire that up. So to fire that up, we need a pit kiln. It is explained in the book, but um, it's pretty easy just to go over it real quick here. We'll open up something a hole in the ground there we'll place it in using the v button the large vessel can only go one at a time but some of the smaller unfired items you can put up to four in your um, kiln at any one time and if we will need some logs so then we can put eight straw and you can just hold right click it won't let you put more than eight at a time in there eight logs and you can you can pull a log out of it if you really want um, and then we need the fire starter i could use this torch and just throw it on the top but sometimes that eats the torch so i don't want to do that here in this case crouch hold right click 
it'll smoke and then set on fire. Um, just note this fire will spread a little bit, but it just breaks this grass. It doesn't really do a lot of harm. So I'll just grab that for now. If you want flowers, you have to break it with the knife, because if you break it with an open hand or another item, it won't drop anything. So if you don't want the all the straw from the grass around, you can just break it with, you know, not a knife. But if you want the straw out of it or the, fl the particular flower, bluegrass is just straw, but these... No, these are all just... Oh, there's a flower. So just like that, if you want to get the flowers, they're not, they're not doing anything in the early game here, so it is best to just kind of delete them so to speak but if we look at this here it's got a time left it takes eight hours for a pit kiln to do its magic so we'll bring you back there when that's done and we've got our actual vessel actually while we're waiting for this i can go over gravity blocks and more importantly anti-gravity blocks blocks that you can use to build a structure or more importantly to pillar up out of things um, on my exploration i didn't come across any of it but as you're wandering around you might come across like you know little holes in the ground that drop down pretty far this is reason the main reason number two why you want to keep your eye on the ground instead of looking out and about while you're traveling around in the world so that you don't fall into those things but say you do or say you need to traverse an area and get up a couple of blocks it is good to know these uh, tricks so the first and easiest is just to use clay blocks clay blocks you can pillar up with them just fine the downside to them is when you break them again they go back to clay balls you don't get any loss that way but it is a downside uh, the second one are mud bricks. Um, that's one of the reasons why I headed over to that villager house right away. But he... Hey, wait, I forget if he had a mud brick floor. Let's go take a look. Um, as I'm walking over that way, I can explain with the, what you do with the mud bricks is you'll need to get some mud. Um, generally not found in this biome, which is the Rolling Hills biome. Um, but if you're in a lowlands, you'll have mud all over the place and it'll be real annoying because it slows you down kind of the same way that this tall grass does. And yes, I am sprinting just to kind of move along the video here, trying to keep it under a half an hour, but we'll see what happens. So he does have a mud brick floor. So when you come across one of these guys, you definitely want to tear apart his floor for these um, blocks here not only if you do want it to make a shelter for yourself but mostly for the pillaring purposes that these are great for so um, the standard way to make these mud bricks as i was going on there um, you basically you take a piece of mud and you combine it with a piece of straw in just in your grid there so if this was mud i'd put it like that and that would create the mud bricks. It'll create four of them. You have to put them on the ground and let them dry out, which takes 15 minutes. As long as it's not raining, quote unquote. <laughs> so a caveat on that there. Um, and then that'll give you the, you can put four of those bricks together to get you the mud bricks that you can use for, like I said, Pillaring works fine with them as long as I'm not running into the thatch roof, which is blocking my placement of the block. The third kind of um, pillaring type of block that we can get in the early game, or anti-gravity, non-gravity enforced block, is the uh, waddle and daub. I think I'm saying that right. Daub, daub, not sure. 100% but basically if you take two logs and you put it like that you'll get this waddle um, I'm not doing it now because I'm limited on resources but you put this waddle on the ground you need to reinforce it with sticks and then you need to put daub on it which is basically dirt clay and straw and it'll give you two daub bricks um, each of these bricks will turn into 
plus the wattle plus the sticks will turn into one block that you can use for the same purposes that um, I'm going over for getting this here, right, is to have blocks that you can use for pillaring or um, building a shelter out of if you kind of want a shelter. Because there are no hostile mobs, I don't see a real reason to actually to make an actual shelter, so I'm not going to be doing that, but... And I heard a zombie burning. What is this? Oh, the he got the villager. Haha. <laughs> the zombie got the villager because the villager was hanging down close to this underground. Very important final tip for this episode is do not build your base anywhere close to a cave or a cave entrance or an area that leads from a, a, a relatively big cave because that's where the mobs mobs will spawn down there and sometimes make their way out of there. Um, creepers and skeletons are really horrible in this pack in, or in any Terraformacraft pack in the early game. So just to note that there, that'll uh, might save your entire playthrough right there just with that one tip. Anyways, that's all I've got for the real early game. This one's getting on over 30 minutes now, so we're going to cut it off here. And uh, we'll bring you back for the more tips and tricks, I guess, in the next one for um, world exploration and getting our first metal tool. So I appreciate you all for checking out the episode, and we will see you in the next one.